Okay, in this video, we're going to be working with a registration form uh, and using the normalization techniques that we learned in the last, uh, previously in the last chapter that we looked at. We're going to take that form and we're going to create tables from it. Okay, so before we go any further, go ahead and hit pause and open up this form that's here on Canvas. Okay, all right, this is what it looks like. This form is going to be very similar which, uh, for what you're going to do for the assignment this week, only you're going to be looking at an order form instead of a registration form. But the steps we'll go through, how you present the answer, is all very, very similar to what you'll be doing on the assignment. Okay. So, just gonna go over what uh, the assignment is and then I'll let you should pause. I'll tell you when to pause because I'd like you to work on it a little bit yourself, right? And then come back and watch the video and I'll walk through how we can solve this problem. All right, so just here's uh, what it says. Given the blank registration form and it's on the next page. We'll take a look at it in a second. Well, let's take a quick look right now. There's the registration form. Okay. I have an example of it filled out with data. I've also got some sample data to show you, okay? And your job is to create the third normal form relations that's needed to store this data in a relational database. Okay? And follow the process below, okay? That process is here and we'll step through that in a second, okay? When your solution should include all non-aggregated data, okay? That's on that form. Now, aggregated data is when you have data that's calculated by other data that's in the database. And we don't really want to ever do that because computers do math really, really quickly. So we don't want to store data because then we would have to keep that calculated or that aggregated data up to date all the time as opposed to when it's needed, just simply letting the computer calculate it. So we don't want to store aggregated data. Remember, each one of your relations needs to have a primary key, and you're going to have to, add, you might have to add some attributes to create a primary key in some of the tables. Likewise, you might ask to have to add attributes in tables to create the foreign keys. Okay? So the list of attributes you first create isn't going to be all the attributes when you're done with this process. We're going to have to add some. And when you list your solution, you should have the relation in that format, only use the real uh, relation name and attribute names, and provide all the functional uh, dependencies that are in that relation. Okay. Now, the process we want to go through is we want to list all the attributes. Okay. Then we want to start grouping them, start classifying them. It's like, okay, I think something goes with the form, something goes with the student. So we're going to have to start looking at what makes sense to put together. And think about how the company database is put together and some of those examples that uh, cause the spurious tuples or the repeated data. That's the sort of things you wanna avoid and keep breaking things down until you do avoid it. Keep normalizing so you don't have that repetition and you create good keys. You're gonna to have to see if there's any functionalities in those uh, themes or the entities that you've identified and list them if there are and there may not be. Then we wanna see if there's any candidate keys. Okay. Most likely that'll be a determinant that you pick out in step three. Okay. And look for the candidate keys. If we have to, pick the primary key or create the primary key if we don't have a candidate key. We'll create a surrogate key, which means the data just doesn't have anything that qualifies to be a primary key, so we give it a surrogate key, which is usually an auto increment field, and the value in that is taken care of by the database system, not by us. Okay. And then we'll look for relationships between the entities, identifying foreign keys or add foreign keys to that are necessary to implement the relationships, and then finally make sure all our entities are in third normal form. Okay, okay so I would, 
want to go over the form with you now. Now that we've looked at the instructions, go over what the form looks like. Okay, so I'm going to scroll down to the next page here. And this is just a very simple form. I doubt that there's all the information necessary that you know to register a student in a real university. So this is just a hypothetical form and it's very, very simple. Okay. And if we can look on it, we can see sorts of data. We've got the date it was filled out, what's the term, the student ID, their name, phone number, email, what courses that student's going to take, the description of the course, what section, like 001 or A01 or DM01, whatever the section number is for that course, and then how many credit hours there is. And then finally, we'll have the total of that. Okay, so that's the blank registration form right there. Let's go ahead and look at one that's filled out. Okay. And again, this is all hypothetical information, I hope you can tell. Okay. And those aren't real class descriptions for any classes. Okay. But here you can see we've got the date the form was filled out, what term it was for, the student ID, their name, phone number, their email, and then what courses they registered for, description of each course, what section of the course that you know that for that term and then what credit hours each was worth and then finally those total credit hours for the whole term All right. so that's for just one student now if we looked at data that's getting captured in a spreadsheet okay this is what I have for you uh, on the form and this is actually from a spreadsheet and this column course number comes right after term and I can show you that okay but I'm trying to indicate with these arrows that this table here should come up here. Okay? And this is what it actually looks like if we look where I got that data. Okay? Student name, their ID, phone, email, date, the term, and then we start repeating course number, description, section, credit hours, and those four columns keep repeating. Okay? And I think you can tell by all that repetition, these are not relations. This is just a big list of data. We could have all sorts of anomalies in here. If I, you know, if the course description was typed in wrong here as opposed to there or wherever else that course is down here. You know, if the sections were messed up, if the credit hours were messed up. So we've got a lot of chances for making errors in this data. So our goal is to take all this data and be able to put it into a database. Right? And that's what I want you all to work on. Okay? And what I'd like you to do is make sure you've looked this over good. Okay? And if you have to, you know, watch this part of the video again. But take about 10 or 15 minutes, pause the video, and go try to work on this. Okay? Put your own brain to use. Because if all you do is watch me solve it, which I'll do next, you're not going to learn as much as if you spend a little bit of time trying to go through these steps. Now, if you just get stuck and you just can't go any further, yeah, come back and start watching. But if I get to the part where you had your question, pause it there after you we get it cleared up and then start, start trying to work on it again on your own. Okay, Because I want you to think about it as you're doing it because your assignment will be doing something very, very similar to this. So if you don't practice it now, first time you're going to be doing it is on the assignment. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video. Okay, now we're going to start walking through these steps. Okay, and taking what we have on that form and turning it into third normal form relations. Okay, so the first step is to list all attributes. Okay, so let me go ahead and just go there. And I'll turn off that. Right? So here you can see these are all the attributes that are on that class registration form. Okay, from what we had right here. I've got all of the attributes listed here. Okay, if you noticed, I put a strike through on total credit hours. That's because that's aggregated data. On the form itself, if you total credit hours is just the sum of the rows above it, those credit hours. So we don't want to store that aggregated data. Be really quick, the computer could calculate that total credit hour uh, just so quickly it's just not worth storing it in the database with all the overhead that would occur just to keep that field up to date. We'd even need another relation for it. So 
we're not going to store uh, the total credit hours. So there's the attributes that we have. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and look at the next uh, step. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the next, next step. We've listed the attributes, so let's go ahead and put these attributes into themes. Okay, so let's go there. Okay. Here's the themes that I came up with. Uh, we've got some attributes that clearly belong to the student and we've got some attributes that clearly belong to the course and these two date and term let's go look at that form again right they really I mean they belong to the form itself you know because you're only registering for a single term uh, on any given form and you've got a date that really doesn't tie in with courses or the student or anything it's really associated with the form and then let's look at what else I got. I've got this course is registered. Okay. Now this is in a table by itself because we have to know how which course and the section number that the student registered in. Okay. So that's what we're looking at right now is we've got these four themes out of the uh, that class registration form. Okay, now that we've got our attributes put into themes, let's go ahead and look at each one of those themes and see if we can find any functional dependencies. Okay, so let's go ahead and go down there. Okay, so there's our four themes. Well, student, I think student ID is a reasonable determinant. If we know somebody's student ID, we can find out their name, their phone number, their email. Okay. So we've got one determinant there. In course, we have course number. Well, if we know course number, I'm pretty sure we can find the course description then and how many credit hours it is. For the registration form, we really don't have a determinant there. You know, the date doesn't determine the term because dates overlap when you could be registering for different terms, you know, like the spring and the summer, you know, and the term doesn't determine the date, so we really don't have a, any functional dependency between those two items. Likewise, in the course is registered between course and section neither one determines the other you know so we really don't have any functional dependencies in theme three and theme four but that's okay okay we don't have to sometimes that's just the way the data is okay all right so now we'll move on to the next step okay Let's go ahead now and try to identify some candidate keys for the in, in, each entity. We've already found out uh, some determinants, so let's go see how we can use those. So I'm going to click down there. Okay. And these are the candidate keys I came up with. Okay. Student ID. All right. That's a pretty good candidate key, like we've talk, talked about. It's a determinant. So is course number. Between themes three and four, we don't have a candidate key right now. Right. What does this mean? Well, we're probably going to have to add uh, a field possibly to both of those themes to be able to come up with a good candidate key or a good primary key. Right. We'll only have one because we only got one. There's no candidate key, so we're going to have to add uh, an attribute or two to be able to make a candidate or a primary key. Okay. And that's what we're going to do next. Okay, we've got some candidate keys for a couple entities, so let's go ahead and make sure that each of our entities now has a primary key. And we'll be using those candidate keys, that's for sure. Okay. So here, these are the attributes in that table, and we've made student ID, it's now a primary key. In the course theme, we've done the same and we've made course number a primary key. Now with a registration form, I created a surrogate key called form ID, right? Because I kind of think of it, if I looked at the registration form, possibly up here in the corner, there would be a, a number, okay? But we don't have one on this form, right? So make one up. It would be what we call an auto increment field or a surrogate key. We would implement it as an auto increment field and just let the DBMS 
take care of make uh, just all they do is just add uh, have a number start at zero keep adding ones all right so it'll be a unique key I also use that down here with the course number sec and section okay and make all three of those the primary key it's a composite key now why would we need to do that well we couldn't have just the course number and section de determining the form ID because that course number and section could be m on multiple forms. Okay? But the combination of a form ID, if we pretend it's up here, with a course number and a section will be unique on every form because you can't register for the same section twice. Okay? So we can reasonably assume that if we have a form ID associated with the form, combine that with a course number and the section, we now know what courses that student registered for. So that's the primary key for theme four. And again, I've got a surrogate key that I added there, and then I'm using that same form ID. Gosh, that might turn into a foreign key primary key relationship. Okay. But now we can identify on the form, we can find out all the courses in which section the student registered. We can actually find the form. And we already had some good Canada keys that we made primary keys for the student in the course theme. Okay, now that we've made primary keys for each of our entities or relations, let's go ahead and start thinking about how these entities are related to each other. So let's go take a peek here. All right, now the student, okay, it's I'm saying that it's related to the registration form because a student can fill out a registration form. They can fill out quite a few actually, but a registration form always belongs to just one student. Okay? So the student and the registration form are definitely going to be connected there. Okay? The course, okay, it's going to be connected to that course is registered because we are talking about what course is the student registered for. Okay? And that's how we can possibly come over and get the course description and credit hours that are shown on the form. Okay, the registration form, we've already said it's related to the student. Okay, because up in student, we said students related to the form. And the form, it's related to that course is registered because, you know, it's listing the section course number okay, for each uh, course that the student registered for. Okay. And then theme four, well, we just said that it was related to the registration form. It's also related to the co course entity, to, yeah, I said form earlier, the registration form, okay? And then the course entity, all right? So we've got uh, a layout now. We've determined what uh, tables are, or what entities are related to who. So now we've got to start thinking about where the foreign keys should go, all right? And that's what we're going to start looking at next. Okay, so we've identified which entities are related to which. So let's go talk about now where we're going to put the foreign keys. Okay, all right, in the student table, okay, we said it's related to the registration form. Well, if I put the form ID here in the student table, it could only point to one registration form. So we're not gonna put the, the form ID here because if we did, the student could only register once and not many universities would stay alive if that happened, okay? So we're not gonna put the foreign key here. And really, let's take, just pop down to the registration form. We put the student ID, we added that attribute here. Now we can use the student ID in this relation as the foreign key. So that's how we implemented the relationship between the student and the registration form. Okay. On course, okay. it's related to courses registered and the foreign key isn't here. It's going to be over in courses registered because the if we had the courses, you know, that full uh, three attribute composite key here, it just wouldn't make sense. We'd have some partial dependencies. So we're going to have to have the foreign key over in the courses registered. And if we look, there are the course number. It's going to be the foreign key that comes back to the 
course entity, okay, based on the course number. And then the re registration form is also related to the courses registered, but the form ID down in courses registered is going to be how we implement this relationship. It's going to refer back to the form ID that's the primary key of the registration form. Okay. So I'll quickly show you an uh, entity relationship diagram of how this is actually looking now. Okay, we have a student that can uh, register one or more, you know, have one or more registration forms. The registration form can have one or more lines, courses registered on it. And each of those courses that are registered for only relates to one course. Okay, because that course number over here only refers to one course in the course table. Okay, and the course, though, could be on multiple course registered lines. It, you know, because we hope the student, you know, there's more than one student that's going to uh, register for this course. Okay. So that's how we've created these relationships. Okay. And that's why we have the foreign keys where there are. Nothing in student. Okay. In course, we have nothing. Okay. In the registration form, we have one foreign key, and that goes back to the student entity. And in the courses registered, we have two foreign keys one to the course entity and one to the form registration form entity. Okay. So there's the foreign keys that we now have to implement this schema. All right, our last step now is we want to ensure that all our entities in third normal form. Okay. If not, we want to go ahead and normalize them. So let's go take a peek at what we came up with and think about it a bit. Right. Here's the entities. Now I've went ahead and write, written them in relational notation and I've listed the functional dependency for each table right. or each theme for each entity. All right. So I would, this is how your uh, assignment should look when you turn it in. You should be just kind of, you know, we have a schema. We don't have any data per se. Okay will have functional dependencies. So for the student table, here's what we have. That's pretty much what we had up above. For the course table, same thing. Let's now take a look at the registration form. Our form ID is now the primary key, and if we know the idea of the form, I like to think of a stack of forms there. If we know the number of that form, we could just thumb through the stack of forms until we found it. We pull that out, we know the data was uh, filled out, we know what term it was for, and we know the student that did it. Okay, So I've got a form ID that identifies all of that. In courses register, we don't have a functional dependency. These three attributes, they're the a composite key, they make up the primary key, but there's no other attributes for them to determine. Okay, It's still a good relation, but there is no attributes to determine, so there's no functional dependency in theme 4. So there's uh, the end of all the steps we did to take this registration form here and then turn it into entities that we could relate, uh, implement in the database. And I showed you a diagram of what that would actually look like if we drew the entity relationship diagram. And next uh, week, this is what you all will start doing, is drawing these. So that wraps up this video about how to register for, you know, how to take that class registration form and turn it into entities.